Bright Suns, everybody. Welcome back to Ordinary Adventures. Star Wars Night is back for 2024 at Disneyland. And there isn't much new this year except for the Star Wars themed food. There's a lot of it, and we're going to try to eat and drink as much as we can. And of course, we'll have some fun. Why don't you come with us on this adventure? to three or four of these Star Wars nights. It's not our first rodeo. You get in, you get your wristband, and then you get your lanyard, which is actually really cool looking this year. It's almost like a Sith holocron or something. I know, it kind of looks that way, but I'm impressed by the map. I love how small and compact it is. This is where you're gonna find all the information about the night, including, and most importantly, all of the delicious, exclusive, limited food items that you could get only on Star Wars nights. And I love how there's like photos of everything, so it makes it very easy to like pick out which ones you want, yeah. get a game plan going. And there's not much different this year, so we're gonna be focusing mostly on food. We're gonna show you if there's anything different that we see, but we have a lot of food to try tonight. Yeah. How so, much can we get to? Let's I don't see. know. We're always very optimistic. I'm hoping, you know what? The force will be with us. So whatever happens, happens, right? Yes. <laughs> First up, we're gonna go to Tomorrowland and we're gonna stop in Alien Pizza Planet which we usually like to avoid, but they have some interesting looking food this time. They have the blue noodle salad. This is butterfly pea tea infused noodles tossed with an herb white balsamic dressing and topped with burrata, tomatoes, pesto, and a Parmesan crisp. And as you know, on the Stark Reserve, they had blue shrimp. Well, now they got blue noodles. Were blue noodles in Star Wars at any point? I think they were in Andor, right? So this is an interesting looking dish, right? Looks good. That big hunk of cheese looks amazing, especially for Pizza Planet. <laughs> <laughs> the noodles are cold. The sauce on it, that balsamic sauce with the pesto and stuff, it needs more of that because there's like not much flavor going there. The cheese is good. I think if this didn't look good, I would give this like a three out of five. But I think I'm gonna bump it up to a three and a half because of how it looks. You know, they look like little worms or something. <laughs> They nailed it with the noodles, like they look so cool. To me it kind of just tastes like obviously a pasta salad mixed with like a caprese salad. There's a good amount of pesto in here. I feel like that's where all the flavor is coming from. And they give you a nice portion of cheese. This is quite good. I'd probably give it like a four out of five. We also got the Wookie Whoopie Pie. Say that five times. <laughs> God, I can't even like get it out. We also got the Wookie Whoopie Pie. Say that five times fast. <laughs> I can't even say it once, apparently. This is a chocolate whoopie pie filled with caramel mousse rolled in white and dark and silver crunchy pearls with a chocolate belt. I think it's kind of funny that they put like the chocolate belt on the bottom of the whoopie pie instead of the top. I wonder what this is supposed to reference. Uh, our favorite Wookiee, Chewbacca, obviously. And he's a man after my own heart if he loves chocolate. So we also got the Wookiee Parfait over at Galactic Grill for Season of the Force, and that was all chocolate too. So who knew that he was like a chocoholic? I thought he just liked porgs, but, oh, I bet you he likes chocolate dipped porgs, right? I think it's just because he's brown that they like make right. all the brown stuff chocolate. Hey, this could have been like an Ewok whoopie pie. That would have been a lot easier to say than whoop, Wookie whoopie pie. I thought this was gonna be really chocolatey, but the dominant flavor is that caramel, like almost like butterscotch flavor. It is so rich. It's almost like too sweet. I don't think I'm gonna be able to finish this, but it is delicious. So this is like, this gets like another four out of five for me for theming and deliciousness. You know, if that's too rich, I have a drink here. I'm gonna wash that down with the passion fruit limeade. This is ginger and passion fruit syrups with lime juice garnished with fresh passion fruit and chia seeds. And the chia seeds I think are what look like those little alien sludge of some sort. Originally we weren't even gonna get this because it didn't even have a Star Wars name. I know, one of our biggest gripes when looking over like the foodie guide for this, a lot of the food doesn't have Star Wars names. Like give it some kind of Grogu goo. Grogu goo, there we go, perfect. <laughs> but it looks really cool. Mm. No, not my brand new sweatshirt. It's not too gingery, it's super tart because of that lime, but like in a good way. I love a good limeade. I feel like we don't get limeades enough. This gets a five out of five. Highly recommend. If you're gonna get anything on the menu here, 
get this. <laughs> it is 8.20 p.m. and the event doesn't begin till 9, but we're already eating the food. And this is a pro tip. A lot of the places here will start selling the food at 8 o'clock and you can pre-order it on the mobile order earlier on in the day. So we have it stacked up of food to get. We actually have to get to Galactic Grill. I know, right I didn't realize we had another one so soon. And we ran over to Galactic Grill to get Duel of the Sliders. This is two chicken sliders with dueling flavors. One sweet, the other spicy, and it's served with seasoned curly fries. And of course, this is a take on Duel of the Fates, which is the infamous, amazing masterpiece of a song that's in the end of The Phantom Menace. It's that big lightsaber sequence. You know it. I was going to say, Darth Maul is about to come out here in like eight minutes, so you need to eat this before he gets here or he'll want to have a piece. question is, which one's sweet and which one's spicy? <laughs> I don't know. I almost stabbed myself with a skewer, <laughs> like a lightsaber. This is sweet. It's like almost like a sweet chili glaze of some kind. Then it has some slaw on top to like cut it out a little bit. This is actually pretty great. All right, try the other spicy one. I thought it was like a standard buffalo sauce. The heat factor on that's probably at like a 7 out of 10. I think I like the sweet one more than the spicy. So you can have the spicy, I can have the sweet. Just like us. Just like us. <laughs> you know what, I'm going to give this a 4.5 out of 5. Quite enjoyable. And to help cut some of that spice in my mouth, I'm going to have a big gulp of this Dagobah Swamp Water. This has blueberry lemonade, Powerade Mountain Berry Blast, apple juice, and green lime glaze. And of course, if you've seen Empire Strikes Back, then you know this is the planet that Yoda was hiding out on. And it, it feels like they're trying to make all the drinks this year, like some kind of gross, like green <laughs> color, do you know what I mean? It's a weird mixture. It's like berry and apple. It does have a very Powerade taste to it. I don't hate it, don't love it either, but I do like the, the little gummy frog. I'll give it like a three and a half out of five years. He's so cute. This is like the cutest gummy frog I've ever seen. When I was a kid, I used to love gummy frogs. Like I'd always get that whenever I went to the candy shop, but they never looked like this. So, oh God, he's so slimy because he kept falling to the bottom. He's cold. Oh. Delicious, though. So. All right, nobody move. with the pleasantries. Your destiny lies with me. Search your feelings. You know this to be true. Tomorrowland Terrace opened up and Darth Vader and Darth Maul were inside. Yeah, that's always the coolest thing when that stage opens up because like I feel like a lot of people don't know about that and everybody in the audience was like <gasps> <laughs> Yeah, I wish they would do that more. They used to do the Jedi Training Academy there, which they should have brought back at least for Season of the Force or not tonight, but they didn't, so. Anyways, we're on to our next food item. We're running late. We gotta go all the way back to Batu. And I just wanted to point out, while we were watching Captain Phasma, I noticed that someone had their mobility scooter and turned it into one of the vehicles from Rise of the Resistance. <laughs> so good. That person's winning tonight. Next up, we made our way over to Docking Bay 7 to get the Tatooine Sun Scorched Tip Yip with Golden Greens and Yavin 4 Papaya Salad. This is chicken with turmeric, garlic, rice, roasted lemon, and a green papaya salad. As you know, Tatooine is the planet with two suns, so they apparently scorch this tip yip, which is like Star Wars chicken. To me, it just looks like a chicken leg. And Yavin is where the rebel base was. Like some of the food doesn't have any Star Wars names. This one has like two or three of them. <laughs> it's like Tatooine, tip yip, and Yavin 4. <laughs> I don't know how I'm supposed to eat this. That's good. It's like a nice rotisserie tip yip that's been 
slightly scorched by the sun. It's not too much. It's nice and juicy, tender. I like it. I feel like the grains in here is the star of the show. They are so unbelievably garlicky. When you mix everything together with like the crunch of the, the cold papaya salad, this is good. Like I feel like this is something that could be on the permanent menu here and I wouldn't be mad at it. Like it's pretty simple, but like, oh my God, this rice is so good. It's like when you go to Benihana and you get that like garlic fried rice almost. Oh, yeah, I love that. Kind of, I don't know. I love garlic. The more garlic, the better. I'll give this one like a four and a half out of five. Next up, we made our way over to the milk stand because they have a special blue milk with gore eggs. And this is just blue milk with pineapple chunks topped with yogurt popping spheres. And gorgs are like kind of like the frog creature in the Star Wars universe. They used to sell them over at the creature stall here in Batu. I think they might even be hanging up in uh, over by Ronto's Roasters. Oh, they. Oh, yeah, you're right. Okay, well, good thing they have some eggs for me to try because <laughs> it sounds delicious. Let me tell you, <laughs> and it looks beautiful as well. Mmm. Oh my god. <laughs> All the pineapple chunks are like on the bottom. Oh, they gave me a boba straw. Duh. Oh my god, this is so good. It honestly just tastes like the blue milk that you either love or you hate. Personally, I love it. We've grown to love it. The consistency, like with those popping spears and the pineapple chunks, just makes it extra slimy going down. This feels very Star Wars to me. I'm giving this a 5 out of 5. This is good. And who knew the Gorg eggs were so delicious? I never knew. But are the Gorgs gonna like hatch in your stomach now? I hope not. <laughs> Next up, we're going to Ogus Cantina where they have blue milk with rum. This is blue milk with dragonberry rum and guava rum. And that's some kind of topping on there. And they do have blue milk with rum in Batu East over in Walt Disney World. But this is different because those rums are different and it's like, I'm guessing it's not gonna be the frozen blue milk, it's gonna be like the blue milk that you get here in Ogus. Oh my god. Is it amazing? Like I said, they do have the blue milk in Batu East, but it's just like a generic rum. This has rums that go with the flavors of the blue milk. This is amazing. They shouldn't just have this at Star Wars night. This should be here every single night, every single day. I'm giving it a five out of five, Peter. The one in Florida, like literally, it's just like Captain Morgan's on top. This has like the flavored rum and that really makes a difference. And it doesn't make it too sweet either. Oh my god, this gets the Ordinary Adventures Galaxy. If this was on the menu, I would get this every single time. There's also a special food for Star Wars Night inside of Oga's. This is the Batu Sea Harvest with a crate salt sprinkle. This is a rice roll with salmon mousse, cucumber, red onion, everything bagel crunch, and broken caper vinaigrette. So basically, this is a Star Wars sushi roll. And as you know, Crate, the salt on Crate, it's a planet from The Last Jedi. But I was expecting it to be red because isn't the salt red? What the heck? Is that the salt down here? Maybe. It's like, I don't know if you can tell, but it's super like goopy and liquidy down there. So these have a really mild sushi flavor. You can't really taste the salmon or anything in there. It almost just tastes like a, a tuna salad or something. But what I'm not loving is that vinaigrette and capers. It makes it so salty that it's almost hard to eat. It's just like so much flavor at once. It's not like terrible, but I don't think I could recommend this one. It's not my favorite. Maybe maybe skip it. Get that pretzel bread instead. Rising moons, everyone. Rising moons. I want to thank all of you. On behalf of the resistance, I want to thank you for your loyalty for your allegiance to our cause. But most importantly, I want to thank you for showing up tonight and making yourselves known. Together, when standing united, we possess great power. Our mission has been to stand up to the First Order whenever and wherever possible. If you look behind you to Skyward, you can see our scouts watching over our gathering tonight. Hi, Chewie, you're our first line of defense. 
secure the perimeter and keep an eye out for any first order agents. The rest of us need to remain on high alert. We also need to establish a call sign with which to identify fellow members of the resistance. Tonight, if you're approached by someone who says they're with the resistance, you can test them with this call sign. You can say, ignite the spark. The appropriate reply is light the fire. Ignite the spark, light the fire. Let's try that on me, ready? Ignite the spark! Light the fire! Ignite the spark! Light the fire! Ignite the spark! Light the fire! Now, I am happy to inform all of you that Ray is on her way here now, but before she arrives... Behind you! They don't have the fireworks. I guess it's because they have the fireworks every other night here in Batu now. But the, the next best thing is the lightsaber meetup with Ray leading the charge, which is really cool. I wish they would bring the lightsaber from the Star Cruiser, the one that like ignites. No, on the drive down here, he's like, "What do you think the odds are that they're gonna bring the like retractable lightsaber from the Star Cruiser?" I and mean, he got me excited. I was like, oh yeah, like that thing is just like, they're not using it now since the Star Cruiser is closed, but no, they didn't. That, that would have like made that moment even cooler. Yeah. And while we were leaving the outpost, we ran into Hera and Chopper. They haven't been around here lately, but looks like they're here for some special missions during yeah, They were just like Star walking around in the dark. <laughs> I had to turn on my flashlight to see them. Hi there. Alright, I think Chopper knows who he's gonna keep an eye on around here, huh, buddy? This one's destroyed more lives than all of us combined. Do you think that's funny? He does think it's funny. So the Ewok this year is meeting by Hungry Bear and the line for the Ewok? So long. Insane. Longest line that I've seen so far. Even though we haven't walked by any other character <laughs> meeting greets, but I was like, oh, we could hop in the line, but oh my god, it would probably take like an hour. Worth it. <laughs> <laughs> so over here at Harbor Galley, they have the Maz Isley Spaceport Cookies. These are three freshly baked chocolate chip cookies stacked with sweet corn cereal whipped topping. And these are like those viral cookies that they've been serving here that are always sold out every time I come to Disneyland. So I saw they were on the menu and I was like, okay, we got to try it. But I will say the photo made them look like like it was this huge stack. I didn't realize they were this small, which is good because we've been eating so much that I'm like really not even that hungry right now, but I just really wanted to try them and like corn whipped cream. Like that sounds good, why not? And then of course, you know, Maz Eisley is the town on Tatooine, right? Yeah, it's like the spaceport. It's the spaceport. It's where you, you'll find the cantina. All right, let's try it. I gotta understand why these cookies are so freaking popular. They're ooey gooey, straight out of the oven, melt in your mouth, delicious. I'm a little disappointed by the, the corn cream or whatever is on top, the cereal cream. It just tastes like normal whipped cream to me. I'm gonna give these a four out of five only because 
They're very small. That's my only com critique, but they are delicious. Next up, we decided to stop at Hungry Bear Restaurant where they have the Dagobah Sunset Slush. This is lemon and mountain blast Powerade slush with strawberry puree and a glow cube. And it looks pretty cool. We saw our friend Jimmy Good with this and we were like, you know what, let's go back there. Let's grab this. But why are like, there are like five drinks at this event that are from Dagobah? <laughs> They're all like the Dagobah yeah. something. <laughs> this is a sunset slush? Yeah, I mean, it looks like a sunset, right? Yeah, it looks really cool. I feel like we we're always a sucker for a glow cube. If it was warm outside, this would hit the spot, but it's actually quite cold. Yeah. It's more like Hoth than Dagobah today. I love slush. I'm a sucker for a nice slush, especially one with a glow cube. So I'm going to give this like a four out of five Peters. But is there anything special about this other than it like looking really cool? Probably not. Well, sometimes you just need to get something cool for a cool photo, right? Yeah. Smile, you are. Do I look cool? Yes. <laughs> That's my Yoda impression. And by the way, they're bumping like the Ewok like party song because the, the Ewok's meeting right, right downstairs and it's just, it's a vibe. Do you think Tinkaba actually had sun tests like this? I don't, I don't buy that. I'm going to say yes. Actually, did we see a sunset in the movie? Now I'm like... Oh no, am I a fake fan? I don't know. I'm gonna have to look it up. And we also saw on the menu here that they have a polystarch funnel cake, and this is a cookies and cream mini funnel cake with chocolate, cookie crumbles, and cookies and cream mousse. And I couldn't say no to that. Originally, she was gonna say no to it. Well, it's a mini funnel cake. This was $10 though, I just gotta say, for how small it is. So I was like, oh my God, I can't eat an entire funnel cake right now, but this is supposed to obviously look like Ray's bread, the poly starch bread from The Force Awakens. So I appreciate that. Like it kind of looks like it, right? Yeah. A little bit. I've never had like a cookies and cream funnel cake before. Oh God, it's like pure chocolate on the inside. It doesn't look like crispy, it looks like... No, it's like, it feels like a cake or like a brownie. You know what, I'd prefer that, honestly. Well, it's funny because like, just keep in mind, like a lot of these places make the things to order, so we were kind of waiting for maybe like 10 minutes. So this is like fresh out of the oven. Maybe they didn't cook it long enough, I don't know. Mmm. Oh my god. Ray was on to something, let me tell you. <laughs> this is good. So what you're saying is she should have just stayed on Jakku scavenged and sold stuff for a portion bread. No, she could bring it with her. Just get more portions, bring it on the road. She's got an adventures to be had. But this is really good. It's It almost just tastes like a warm chocolate chip muffin or something, like straight out of the oven. It's not very crispy. It's nice and ooey gooey on the inside. I don't know if that's a mistake. I don't know if it's supposed to be like that, but whatever it is, it is working for me. It's more chocolatey than like cookies and cream, but the mousse, this is just good, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and give this one like a 4.75 out of five. It doesn't quite get a five, but it is good. And I appreciate the theming here. This is what I'm talking about. This is why we love coming to these events when they have theming like this. And just so you know, Hunger Bear actually closes at midnight, so we made it just in time. So if you wanna get this funnel cake or the drink or whatever, get here before midnight. And I just wanted to say a little appreciation for my nails tonight. Can you see them from here? Sure. They're like sparkly and dark, like a galaxy. I did that on purpose. Theming. It's called theming. We'll look it up. The more I stare into this glow cube, I find myself conflicted. I don't know which side to choose. Do I choose the dark side? Or do I choose the good side? The good side? <laughs> In my mind, I was like, wow, that's gonna be so funny. I messed it up. Don't stare too long at the, the, the glow cube. You might become a little conflicted. <laughs> it's all your fault, Jimmy. Yes, we blame him. I'm sorry, what can I say? Disney, the check's in the mail, right guys? Yeah, <laughs> no, I'm on such a sugar high now and it's all your fault. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with you guys. We really don't love coming to these after a dark events because you have like four hours to do so much and you have like not enough time to do any of it. And yeah, there's whole parts of the park that we didn't even go to. <laughs> yeah, this year especially we didn't see a lot of the entertainment that's going on. 
because we were trying to hit up the food. But even that, like, can't do it all. I know. I know. We tried. You know what? We tried, and that's all that matters. Yeah. <laughs> on one hand, these events are fun. But on the other hand, they're, like, very stressful. So we always tell ourselves we're not going to come to the next one, and then we end up buying a ticket. If you want to see a lot of the photo ops and entertainment that we actually missed this year, you can watch last year's video. We'll put it right over there. We want to say thank you to some of our Patreons. That includes Cody, Nicole, and Justin and Amanda. Thank you guys so much. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll, we'll see, see you on the next, next adventure. adventure. Bye bye. I don't, I don't know why I said the like that. <laughs>